Welcome back to Storytime, where people are going to be sending in their craziest Yu-Gi-Oh stories. I'm going to be reading them out, and we shall see just exactly what the fuck goes on in this community. So we've had, um, I think the last one was the passport, like Photoshop for an invite at Nats. So today we've got, we're going to call him Creep, and Creep here has sent in a story about an ARG. So, let's uh, let's get into this. We have, uh, just getting the email here. Hey Farf, I'm loving all your recent content, so I wanted to join in the fun. I thought about talking about it on my own channel, but I think your audience might enjoy it more. This is the story of the craziest night of my life. Now, when you when you when you're gonna grow up and when you're older, I don't think you're ever going to tell your kids as uh, the craziest night of my life was 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 a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. Well, I mean, you might tell them that, but is that really something to be proud of? Maybe, maybe not. It was an ARG in Richmond back in hat format. It had been playing for a long time, but I'd never had the chance to travel to a major event because I was still in high school. When I finally got the chance, I was super nervous. My friend talked me into going with him and some others I didn't know very well from another locals. I was all set to go, and we just need a name for the friend right now. So let's take a look at the chat. Who wants to be the friend? Who wants to be the friend? Du, 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 du. Let's go with uh, Stompy. All right, your friend is Stompy. So creep and Stompy. So Stompy talked me going, uh, talked me into going with him, and some others I didn't know very well from the locals. I was all set to go, but my friend had to cancel. Uh, so Stompy cancelled, but assured me that the other guys would look out for me. I I'm really curious how old you are at this point, because this sounds like uh, somewhat illegal and somewhat very weird, but we'll see how it goes. We met up at one of the other guys' houses and ended up leaving super late in a cramped pickup truck for a four-hour drive. Uh, maybe it's just me, but this is getting slightly erotic as far as I can see. One hour in, and we were on the side of the interstate with no gas in the middle of nowhere. Okay, you're going to have to, like, not Americanize this for me, because I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> One hour in, we are on the side of the interstate. Okay, I mean, that's probably the motorway. Gas, I guess, is petrol in the middle of nowhere. All right, so you ran out of fuel in the middle of the motorway. Hmm. How does that happen? Like, I just don't get it. Like, do you, like, do people not fill up before they go out on a journey? Like, what? What? I don't know. Anyway, three hours and a whole lot of hiking to a gas station filling a bottle later. We found on the side of the road with gas. Uh, we were back on the road. Only three hours? That's that's not that long, honestly. Good job. Shockingly, this was the least awful part of the trip. As we pulled into Richmond, we had two hours before registration. We all agreed we- wait, wait, what? You made it in time for registration after a three hour delay? How early did you leave for this event? That's what I want to know. Um, we all agreed we should drop our luggage off at the hotel. I asked the guy that organized everything saying, uh, where is the hotel? Uh, we have to find one. <laughs> at this point, I realized that I should have stayed at home. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so your, uh, your, uh, your, your friend, uh, Stompy has left you alone with a group of strangers to, uh, go to an ARG event, uh, you don't know who, who they are. You're probably quite young. Uh, they haven't pre-booked a hotel and they've managed to run out of, of petrol. Uh, I have a real like pet peeve for disorganization. So I would not get on with these people. I can tell you that. So at this point, I realized that I should have stayed at home. Keep in mind, I have severe anxiety and panic disorder. I was slightly concerned to say the least. <clears throat> There were several events in Richmond that weekend, and every hotel was fully booked, except for one. I don't know what the average cost of hotel uh, of hotels is in Europe, but here it's about 70 or $80 per night. This one was $25. Um, that seems... That doesn't seem like the worst thing ever. Uh, but... I guess it's probably a shithole, right? Okay. After paying the owner behind bulletproof glass, we headed to our rooms. Well, I guess we can uh, safely assume what kind of uh, what kind of service the this hotel usually gets. 
The door to our uh, room was difficult to open since there was a massive dent from a police battering ram. <laughs> this is... This man's in a fucking movie. I'm just going to read that again. The door to our room was difficult to open since there was a massive dent from a police battering ram. While we tried to force it open, a man on a bicycle rolled up and offered to sell us deodorant. Wait, what? Is that just a random anecdote that you've added to the story? <laughs> so you're trying to open this, like, door that's completely, like, blocked or, like, just really hard to open because there's been police raids on the hotel? <laughs> and now a guy on a bicycle came up to you and trying to sell you deodorant. So I would take that as uh, maybe a bit, like... Like, I'd be offended. Like, maybe he smelt you from across the road or something. Or maybe he's like, ah, you go players, dodrant. Uh, I would honestly thank him, to be honest. But anyway, another thing to keep in mind is that I'm a sheltered white kid that grew up in the backwoods. This was a bit of a new experience for me. Uh, I don't know what backwoods are. Like, what does that mean? Are you a hillbilly or something? Is there, Are you like Trevor from Grand Theft Auto V? Is that what, is that, what that means? Uh, so, yeah, if someone could tell me what the backwoods are, I'd appreciate that. Um... <clears throat> We dropped off our bags and got made and made it to the venue. I walked up to registration and realized the others were walking away. Turns out everyone else came to vend cards. Uh, this was weird to me, but I was excited to finally play in a big event, so I ignored it. Hmm, okay, so uh, that's not the weirdest thing ever. I don't think I'd be super concerned, but like, of all these random guys I was with, just not a single one of them entered the tournament. They all came to vend, and yet they don't uh, see the thing about wannabe vendors is like they all act like they have all this money but then like pay $25 a night hotels that have been raided by like drug uh fucking DEA what's it called drug enforcement agency <laughs> backwoods middle of nowhere countryside oh okay cool uh, I was so tired from the ride that after four rounds I was one three and pretty bummed out I spotted one of the guys I came with walking out of the venue he was really nice to me on the ride up so I figured I'd go get some fresh air with him we got to the truck and we were having a nice chat uh, as he unpacked his bag in the back seat. Uh, we're going to call him Drakenborn. Okay. So me and Drakenborn uh, got to the uh, got up to the truck and we were having a nice chat, uh, chat, but then he unpacked his bag in the back seat. I looked in the window and noticed a pile of binders. I think you can all understand what was going on. I immediately freaked out. All right, Drakenborn. Uh, has managed to collect a whole bunch of binders in his bag in the middle of an event. At this point, I was sure we were going to end up in jail and head back inside and dropped. <laughs> okay, overreaction much? <laughs> I spent the rest of the day trading and avoiding my group until they called to say we were going to the hotel. This is when things got out of hand. <clears throat> I mean, that's a bit extreme. Like, you drop because, like, your friends are kleptomaniacs. Everyone was playtesting in the room that I was sharing with the thief. Playtesting? Playtesting for what? <laughs> they just came to vend. What are they playtesting for? I decided to go get some food to calm down. Uh, as I walked out, Drakenborn followed out and said, I'm going to go find some Whedon hookers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I laughed and went to pick up pizza. I came back 20 minutes later, and he was rolling a joint, and a hooker was charging her phone in the corner. <laughs> the fuck? Well, at this point, it's at least somewhat impressive. Uh, I'd never smoked pot. Before long, he'd gone through three joints while she just sat there watching the others play Yugi. <laughs> this, this man invited the hooker over. <laughs> to watch them play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> the problem was that the uh, was that the room had no AC and the tiny room turned into a major hotbox. After about an hour, I was really feeling it. Turns out that weed makes me really flirtatious and I was talking to the hooker as she waited for Drakenborn to stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> hey bitch, I'm paying you good money here, okay? Watch me fucking game this guy, alright? I'm paying you money to watch me OTK these plebs, alright? Sit there and you're fucking fishnets and stockings or whatever and watch me fucking OTK this guy, alright? A lot of what happened next is still hazy, but she talked me into $40. Uh, she she talked me into 
okay? She asked me my name right before. I didn't want to give her my real name, so I tried to sound suave and said, you can call me Mr. Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so you're um you're with a bunch of strangers, you're quite young, there's a hooker watching people playtest for a Yu-Gi-Oh event in the corner of a room charging her phone, uh, and then she offers you forty dollars for a blowjob, she asks you for your name and you tell her my name is you could you I quote you can call me Mr. Stevens. I'm pointing out that I was a shy virgin and this was really out of character for me. Oh yeah, it must have been all the weed, right? After it was all done, I sobered up and felt awful. Uh, I threw up and passed out in bed. I woke up to a knock around 2am. 2 2 it was the hooker with a white ring on her nose begging for more money from Drakenborn. Eventually she left and I got back to sleep until 4am when sirens woke me up. I peeked out the window to see the same hooker in handcuffs being put into a cop car. So that's the story of ARG Richmond, being left on the side of the highway, the world's shadiest hotel, tons of theft, getting hired for the first time, hiring a prostitute, watching her get arrested six hours later. The good news is that I travel with cool people and trips are my favourite part of playing card games, but I had a pretty rough start. I hope you enjoy this little story and I'm glad it could be a part of a great series. Creep Evie signing out. Well done. The story of Mr. Stevens. Well, guys, that's uh, that's that's what your first Yu-Gi-Oh event can be like. Hookers in Yu-Gi-Oh. Thanks everyone for watching, and see you next time.